Hey guys, this is Eric from Mindful Trader. This video is going to talk about the way that I do my stock market research and exactly what the process is. Uh, so Mindful Trader, it's a business that I run. It's a stock picking service. So I post my trades live uh, for subscribers to see. And I also teach the strategies for people who are interested in case they want to learn the strategies on their own and trade them on their own. Uh, before we jump into that, let me just point out the disclaimer on the screen. There's a URL there. Uh, just type that into your browser, pause the video, and check it out. I think it's important that you read that and understand it before you watch this video. So let's get into the data. So I, what I specialize in is uh, looking at data, historical data, and, and extracting from that data where there are tendencies with price movement that are repeating, that happen over and over, where there's patterns that seem to repeat themselves. That's what I'm good at identifying. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how I've done that over the course of my time uh, researching the stock market. So it all started for me with uh, raw data, actually. So, about, so several years ago, um, when I first started researching uh, stock market prices, I did it manually. And uh, on the screen right now, I have an example of one of the files that I had. So I bought data. There's companies who have data and, you know, stock market price data. And I bought some data um, and so that I could manually review the data and look for patterns and trends and stuff like that. And this is an example of one of the data files I bought. This is just for one ticker. And you can see here it shows it shows price data minute by minute. So right here, uh, it shows each minute. So this is each row represents one minute of data. And there's the date. This is back in 1997. And it will show also the open price, the close price, the high and the low for that minute. And as you can see here, this is a lot of data. So this is for one ticker I have these kind of critical price points is critical uh, metrics for each minute of price data. And I have for every minute of data going back more than 20 years. And so you can see here, this is a huge file. I mean, tons and tons and tons of data points. This is what um, someone like me who likes to do this sort of research, this is what we love. We want to have tons of data uh, to be able to do our research gives us more robust conclusions, or at least potentially does. And this is this was something I could just chew on uh, quite a bit <laughs> when I first got these. So when I first got these data sets, I went through this manually. Um, and you know, I would I would take a lot of the data, I'd put it in Excel, I'd run various functions in Excel to try to look for patterns. And it took a long time. I did find a couple of trading strategies doing that approach that I still use to this day. One of them is is like um, you know the original trading strategy for Mindful Trader, and it's it's an ES. I'm sorry, an MES trading strategy. So it's traded on the MES futures. So I still use that MES futures trading strategy to this day. And every time it triggers, I get excited. I feel excited about that particular one uh, because I have such good memories of developing the trading strategy. Anyway, um, I no longer use a manual approach to my stock market research. I now use a software-based approach, and I'll show you that in just a moment here. But I wanted to say that even though I did so much manual effort, you know, this laborious process for more than a year on this data, I think it was helpful for me uh, because it like established the groundwork within me to understand what's happening kind of at the uh, at the most basic, you know, minute levels of price detail. And I think maybe it gave me some sort of intuition uh, uh, on how the price moves at you know at this granular, you know, minute by minute level that may have helped me in developing trades either helped me with knowing which sort of uh, trading strategies may work or what the limitations of a particular trading strategy might be. So somehow I feel like it was kind of this core part of my my learning process actually. Uh, and so that's that's something I don't regret in any way. I'm, I'm happy that I went through that initial process 
as laborious as it may have been. So after that, I moved to a software, and I've been using this software for years now. It's called TradeStation, and this software is great. Basically, instead of me having to manually look through these pieces of price data, TradeStation stores all this information itself. And what I do is I write code to access that information. All right, so I'm gonna grab an example of some code I have for TradeStation, and I wanna point out what I'm doing with the code. So I'm accessing the historical data. The way that I'm accessing this data through TradeStation is I'm writing an algorithm, actually. Uh, what I mean by that is that I am specifying very clear, defined rules for a trading strategy. And I'm asking TradeStation to look back over the last you know, 20 plus years uh, at the ticker that I'm applying this, this strategy to and identify how many times could this trade have set up and what might the results have been of the trade. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm, that's my way of accessing historical data and doing research on it is I, take a, I write a trading strategy in code and I apply it against historical data. And you can see here, this is an example of some code that I have. Um, I'm not going to teach you the code itself. Uh, I don't think there's any reason you need to know that if you're subscribing to the service. Um, I just, I guess, want to show you an example of what it looks like um, and just give you an idea of what it is that I'm doing. So I write that code and then I apply it against a strategy. I apologize, against a ticker. I apply it, the strategy from the code against a ticker. And then TradeStation will run it back against history and show me how it might have performed. Now I say how it might have performed because this, this isn't live trading that I'm doing here. This is called a back test. This is taking a trading strategy and running a back test against historical data. There are limitations to back testing and that's why I don't say this shows how it did perform in history because I didn't trade it live in history. I don't know for sure that I would have executed these trades at these, at these points but this is how it might have performed. Uh, and I'm gonna show you exactly how, uh, how this, what, what this, this means here, what this representation means on the screen. So this is one of my f favorite parts about TradeStation is when it runs a given strategy against history, it gives you this visual depiction of how it performed. Now it also gives you like, you know, actual numeric results for what the profitability might have been and all that sort of information. But it also gives you this visual display, which I thought it would be fun to show you guys. And it shows you where a trade uh, uh, may have entered according to the strategy through the back test. And it shows you, based on the rules that I wrote in my code, where it might have exited. And again, the, the rules are very specific about when to exit, uh, when to enter, and these sorts of things. Uh, what we don't know why I keep saying it might have or it could have is because we don't know definitively that our order would have been filled. So for example, this shows here a sell would have happened uh, in, in, according to the back test. But we don't know definitively that if we had our order, you know, our sell order open at that time in real life that it would have been filled. Now it's typically just extreme circumstances that cause orders not to be filled but it's definitely possible. It's even happened to me before uh, where I have my order, the price goes above the above my exit price, but it didn't fill my order. And that's something important to be aware of is that there are limitations to back tests. That said, I find them to be incredibly useful, helpful tools uh, uh, for finding strategies that might have edge. And I'll tell you, I've, I've done a lot a lot of uh, tests. I've, t I've tested so many strategies and I recently tried to do the math and I don't know exactly how many different strategies I've tested, but it's certainly north of 5,000. And uh, I mean, I've tried so many different types of strategies and so many of them don't work. And there's, it's surprising to me, at least it used to be surprising. Now it's, it's what I expect because I've seen it so many times, but there were, there would be these trade strategies touted by other uh, people who I perceived to be industry leaders and I would back test it just to see for myself what does the data show and it didn't show profitability and it was kind of shocking and yet so informative 
And so that's why I say, although there are limitations to back tests, there also is a ton of potential value in them. I mean, I'm able to segregate a lot of trading strategies that I know these definitely don't work. I mean, even in back tests, they don't, <laughs> they're, they're not performing it well. So that, that helps me kind of pull away and segregate the ones that perform well in back tests. And we know there's limitations and they may, there may be, um, that it may be that in real life, the trades wouldn't have functioned. They wouldn't have performed exactly how shown in the back test. We know that. That doesn't mean that we can't use the back tests to inform us and help us make decisions that lean on historical tendencies. Uh, so now let me make sure I make clear what this uh, display means. So this shows where an entry was, this shows where an exit was according to the rules from my code in the back test. And right now I'm looking at the ticker A, that's just one company, um, it's called Agilent Technologies. Uh, it's a fine company, I'm sure. It's not probably the hottest stock ever or anything like that, but it's definitely a solid company. Um, it's been around for a long time. And this is an example of a type of company that I like to trade. I like to trade companies that are well-established. Uh, I don't trade penny stocks, for example. So Agilent is not the, you know, not the shiniest ticker name you're gonna come across, but it's a solid company and it's the type that I like to trade. And so here you see, this is an example of another entry and another exit. Here's another entry and another exit. And you can see these blue dotted lines indicate that it was profitable in the back test. And here's another one. This one, I mean, it barely was profitable. This is more like a break even sort of a thing. Uh, but this shows you where, according to my rules, where would all the trades have occurred, uh, assuming that the orders could have been fill filled in real life and it shows you how the trades perform. Now here's, here we go, here's one that has a stop loss and losses are totally normal with these trading programs, you know, with the trade, with the trades that I do, there's plenty of losses. And so I just wanna make sure you see a loss in the screen as well. So here's one, the trade got entered, but then it ended up in a stop loss. Here's one shortly before it that had a profit. And so that's, I don't know about you, but isn't this fun to look at? I mean, it's fun to just see, wow, this trading strategy and this, by the way, this is uh, the trading strategy that's applied to this is my, is a real trading strategy that I use for Mindful Trader. This is my stock trading strategy. I have one trading strategy that I use for stocks. It's so robust from my perspective uh, and in back tests that that's all I need for stock trading. So for all the stocks I trade, I have just one strategy that I use for all of them. And this is it, it's applied to Agilent here. Anyway, just to finish that thought, isn't it fun to be doing research where you get to see exactly how the trade strategy performed in a way that looks like this? It's so fun for me. I, this is what I love to do. Uh, anyway, so I went about and did all my research that way, and that's how I came up with these trading strategies. Now, there's a lot more to it, but I just wanted you to kind of just get an idea behind the scenes what it is that I'm doing to identify these strategies. I do want to point out one more thing really fast. I'm going to go to, let's see, 2008. Let's see if I can find that. Here we go, 2008. So 2008 was the year of the financial crisis. It was a market crash that year. And I just wanted to show how this particular trading strategy performed there. Notice the price is crashing here. This is October of 2008. And notice no trades are being taken. And then a trade was taken down here. And I just wanted to point that out, that during market crashes, um, uh, there's not a lot of trading activity with my trades. And the reason is because I haven't found a lot of edge when the market is in kind of a bear market situation. So therefore the trading in my portfolio from these trading strategies that I've written is typically pretty light. And that's that can be a good thing actually. Uh, so, so if the market is just in a normal pullback that's one thing, but if the market is in all out bear territory and it's just going down, 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 then uh, there aren't gonna be a lot of trades and that can be something that protects the portfolio, which is good. That doesn't mean that it's fail proof, it just means that I purposely trade lighter. I, I wrote my algorithms to purposely trade lighter when it's a bear market because there isn't as much edge. Okay, so I hope that that gives you uh, a better idea of what it is that I'm doing when I say I'm doing stock market research. This is, this is what I've been doing for several years. 
Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me anytime, eric, E-R-I-C, at mindfultrader.com. Thanks, guys.